I'm Stepping Stones member Lori Chase, and I'm talking with Dick this morning. Good morning, Dick. Good morning. Could you briefly describe your brain in your life before your brain injury, maybe beginning with your employment? Well, um, well, I, you know, I, I got married, and three kids came along, and. Um, I don't know. I I started like working under the table, and uh, well, I uh, I ended up going to jail in '97, and um, your accident happened first, or you were in jail first? Oh, I was in jail first. And, yeah, and then. That your accident happened, right? Yes, yes, yeah. You were on foot? No, I was on a bicycle. But I was like riding towards the traffic, you right. know. So the traffic was coming at me. And um, I don't know if I was hit by him or or what, you know, I got I got a police report from my younger brother that said that I hit a mailbox. I I can't think of anything, you know, I just lost, um, I can remember him driving at me and his, and his passenger was waving and that's the last I remember, you know, and the police report said I hit a mailbox, so I don't know, you know. So, Dick, now can you describe your brain injury for me and tell me how long ago it happened and what happened? To well, it happened in June of 2001, and um, I was on a coma for, for two months, and I came out of it, and uh, like my, my, my younger brother told me, that I could, he was he was there when I came out of it, and he thought that I was going to be literally messed up, you know. Like there's some people here that are just mm -hmm. they just they just gone, you know, because I still have um, screws and nuts in my brain in my uh, my skull because they did that uh, to close it. Cause I see I see an X-ray. And um, and I, you know I came out of it and I came up here because this happened in Massachusetts and I came up here because the day I came out of it my wife was there and that was the last I seen of her and then she came up here and I told my my younger brother to call her and set it up so I could come up here. You know, because after I got out of jail, I came up here then. But then I went back to Massachusetts because of, um, oh, just things I found out, you know, that I, that I thought was going on. And I went back to Massachusetts you know, to look into the, to the business and everything, and, uh, you know, and this is the way it ended, you know. Because they found me in the street with my brains, but I mean, geez, you know, like my younger brother told me, he goes, that he thought I was going to be messed up for the rest of my life, and um, I'm not, you know, except for... Um, I go against my wife with uh, some of the stuff she's still doing because it's stuff you, you grow out of, like you grow out of it in your 20s and you grow out of it when you're in your 30s and she's still doing it. And, uh, and she's got it now so um, I can't even go back to where she uh, lives. So, so from your head injury, do you know specifically what part of your brain is injured, or is it all over? Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. 
it's over with. Like I said, I seen the x-rays and there's all screws and bolts up there that are still there. You know, it's like a, a capital U that starts there, goes my, my, uh, around my ear and down. And uh, from what I heard, they, they found me in the street with, uh, you know, bits of it or whatever, you know. And uh, I came out of it all right, you know. I come out of it better than I probably would have been if it didn't happen, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I don't know, I'm kind of uh, grateful that it happened like that, so, um, but, you know, the whole problem is, like, I got, um, I got a letter from the registry asking for my license. Do you have problems with memory, you feel? Yeah. Yeah, I do, like, you know, I I couldn't tell you, like, even a, a quarter of the people up there, their names, you know, mm -hmm. I forget names so easy, you know, you know, like yeah, you, I don't yeah. even know your name. One second, did you go through rehabilitation? And if you did, what did you go through? Did you go through physical therapy, occupational therapy, or speech therapy after your injury? Mm -hmm. You didn't have any kind of therapy? Well, I, I, took, um, I took a test for, for, for my driver's license. It was like, well, it was like to see if I could, if I could get it. And I, I passed everything except for one thing. And I, you know, I asked the lady, you know, she had like three leather, like shoelaces. And she uh, sewed three square pieces of leather with them. And I didn't follow it, you know. And I asked, like, well, what, can, can you do that again? And she goes, no. So I just, you know, I didn't even try it. You know, I just said, oh, okay, that's that. But that's, I, f I failed, you know, yeah. because I got a letter saying that I failed, and I went back and I asked her, and it was because of that one thing that I, I couldn't do. But I just passed a test that was given to me like a couple Wednesdays ago that um, I, pa I passed it and the guy told me he's going to send a letter to here and to the place where the, the guy that um, wrote me the letter to the registry you know saying that I shouldn't be allowed to drive because he's down south now I see a different guy now, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a, I got a son. Well, it's supposed to be mine anyways, but he, I mean, he's 19 years old. He's gonna turn 20 May 23rd, and that's when it'll be uh, 10 years since I've I've, I've I've smoked. I mean, the kids. He's like, you know, the one, he's going to be on uh, 20, May 23rd, and the other one's 17, and the girl is uh, 16. So, you know, I'll just deal with it the way I, I, I can, you know. So you're saying you don't really have much of a relationship with your wife and your kids anymore? Well, I seen, um, I seen the one that's, uh, 17 the other day, and, uh, I was supposed to see my wife this morning when I was catching the bus, but I called before I even left for the bus, and there was no, no answer, you know, nobody answered the phone. 
because she was supposed to see me this morning. And uh, I'll find out about that today, you know, when she calls. What have been your biggest communication challenges? Do you find it easy or difficult to communicate with other people? Or interact with other people? Well, yeah, you know, I just, uh, I'm in Rochester and I really, I don't know anybody, you know. Even though when I was getting my meds the other day, I met a guy that, uh, I don't know, I'm going to probably do some drinking with him this weekend, you know, because he kind of invited me over to his house. But I didn't even really know him, you know. But he remembered me. What are some goals that you have for yourself at this point in your life? And what are you doing to achieve them? Huh? And do you have any goals for yourself at this point in your life? Yeah, I to get a job. You know? Mm hmm start working and, you know, buy a house or something, you know, I don't know. So you find um, financially after your accident it's been difficult? Oh yeah, I, I mean, I'm on, I'm on Social Security and, geez, I, you know, I, I get nothing really, you know. Like my younger brother chips in to pay the rent, you know. But I want to start working because, I mean, he's my younger brother, you know. And he don't, you know, he don't drink, smoke pot or nothing. He's taking care of my parents. My my father right now is in, like, uh, an old, old, old people's home, you know, because um, he had internal problems, you know. And my mother's going to live till she's a hundred, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, my father just reacted different because he quit smoking before my mother did. But um, his system just couldn't handle it as good as, as, she, as she could, you know. So I, mean, I even told her that I, because uh, I remember when I was a little kid, I ran in her room. And she was smoking out the window, mm -hmm. you know. And my father didn't smoke then, but I mean, she, my mother was trying to quit, which you know she she did. But I mean, you know, it was just like like me. I mean, you just I I I'd go six months without smoking, but when I had a a cigarette. It would all come back, you know. I didn't care, except when I started coughing up that garbage out of my throat from smoking, I would quit until I stopped coughing it up. And then um, I'd smoke, you know, because it was just, I don't know, something about this tar and nicotine, it just stays in your body for a long time. But it's like now I can't, you know, I can't, I can't smell nothing because of this brain injury, and um, it's like, like right now, all it, it's like all I can hear is like a, a sandblaster out of this ear. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't hear nothing out of it, but it just makes that noise mm -hmm. that is uh, really, really a pain, you know. Because I, I wake up at like, you know, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning and that's it. I just lay there with my eyes closed. Do you tell me how Stepping Stones has made an impact in your life since you've been coming here? Well, it's something to do and it makes me feel grateful that I'm not as bad as some of the people here, you know. I mean, it's the nuts and bolts up there, but, you know, it's, um, it's better. You know, it bedded me anyways, you know, like I have nothing against cops anymore. I used to hate them, 
you know, I want um, my oldest son, I sent him a 1-800 number about uh, some place he could go to become a cop or something like that, you know, in that, mm -hmm. in that class of uh, work, you know. And I don't know if he has yet or not, but you know, I'll have to find out. So you feel like stepping stones has helped put you put things in perspective for you and look at things in a more positive way? Oh well, yeah, yeah. Anything else? I was gonna ask him one more question. Um I forgot how I was gonna ask this. Is there any advice you would like to give anybody that might be listening to you talk here? Say that again. Is there any advice you would like to give to somebody that may be having a brain have a brain injury about how your life has been since your brain injury and how they can cope with it or anything like that? Well, it's like I I I made out, you know. So, you know, you know, you, know, you never know. Mm -hmm. on how it how it heals, you know. Like I said, you know, there's screws and bolts up there holding my my uh, uh whatever it's called together, you know. And uh you know, I I made out like a bandit, you know, mm -hmm. compared to some of the people you just yeah. like, you know, you feel bad for them. But I mean Mine only made me kind of better, even though I, I forget, I, I forget easily, but, you know, it's, oh, it's, it's better in its own way, though, you know.